Imagine yourself about to reach a goal, a milestone you've worked on for weeks, months, years perhaps. Maybe it is being admitted to a top business school, like Grenoble École de Management. Maybe it is going on an expedition, or getting that job at your dream company. You're close to success. You can almost start to celebrate. But suddenly, something unexpected happens. A hurdle, an interference, a roadblock. How do you deal with obstacles? I remember my first day in this school, in this amphi, when the director at the time, Thierry Grange, welcomed us. And at that point, as the program was starting, I was pursuing two goals. The first one was to find my internship. And I had to go through many interviews. Maybe some of you can relate. But the second goal, the second goal was less about reason, but more about passion. I wanted to learn to ride Harley Davidsons. <laughs> and for that, I had to take a driving test. And that's what I want to tell you about this evening. Because this experience, trying to get that permit, wasn't only about the ability to ride amazing motorcycles, it also gave me a new perspective on challenges we face. And that's what I want to tell you about, how you can turn obstacles to your advantage. As long as I can remember, I was passionate about Harley Davidsons. I wanted to hear their unique sound, admire their amazing design, and I wanted to be part of the bikers' community. I was picturing myself on the long desert roads riding across Arizona. That feeling of freedom. Before I could do any of this, I had to get that license and prove that I could master the motorcycle at normal speed, but also during a slow slalom on the track. Pierre was my instructor. He's a very laid-back guy, long hair, baggy pants, always smiling. And after several weeks of practice, he finally signed me up for the test. And on the day, he was waiting for me at the end of the track, along with three other bikers who had just succeeded at the slalom. I started. I was pushing the weight of the bike to one side, lifting it back up towards the other. If we have any bikers in the room, yeah, yeah, so you will attest that at a slow speed, losing your balance can happen quickly, right? And that's because you don't have the benefit of inertia and gyroscopic forces. And a quick disclaimer here, this is as much physics you will hear in my talk this evening. In simpler words, it means you're fighting against gravity. And that's what I was doing as I was getting near the dreaded U-turn. I had to make a turn around a yellow cone. You know those construction work cones you see on the side of the road sometimes. So make a turn around it and then come all the way back. And at that point, I know that once I make that turn, the rest is easy and I can almost start to celebrate my license. So I'm getting closer to that cone and looking at it, getting closer to it, and staring at it, I start to make the turn, and I took a massive spill. At that pace, a fall is usually not painful, but that fall hurt. I can tell you that lying on the ground there, the open road, the feeling of freedom, feeling the wind in my hair, felt far felt like it was an impossible dream. The pain was so intense that I doubted 
I could ever get back on a motorcycle again. I'm not talking about physical pain. No. Well, I did get a bruise on my leg, but I was all right. I'm talking about the deep hurt to my ego. That was painful. And you know, that turn had been bothering me for weeks. That cone had been playing with me at every practice. It would always be there, staring right back at me, threatening to jump in front of the bike. It was an imposing monster, a yellow giant standing in front of the track. I was even having nightmares about the stupid cone. Now, I have a confession to make. I stole the cone. I stole it. <laughs> and in fact, I brought it here to show you this evening. Do you want to see it? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this, <laughs> this is what made me fall, fail, feel miserable. Pierre came towards me in his cool and casual style to give me advice before the second attempt. He smiled and said, you're staring at the yellow cone. That's what's making you fall. You're putting all your attention and energy on the obstacle. What you need to do is lift your head up and look towards where you want the bike to go. I picked up my machine and my dignity from the ground <laughs> and launched myself again. Right, left the turn, lifted my head up, looked towards where I wanted the bike to go, and turn complete. License in hand, I reflected on what Pierre said. We've all fallen, failed, felt miserable at some point, whether it was at work, in a relationship, or simply in learning a new skill. Have you tried to fight against the gravity of life's events and lost your balance? Got your ego so hurt that you felt stuck and didn't want to go back out there? When we look back, we may see the obstacles differently. And unfortunately, on the track of life, we don't always get a second go at solving challenges. But we learn and we grow. And that's why now I keep this on my desk, to keep this as a visual reminder that when something unexpected happens, we should not focus all of our attention and energy on the obstacle. And having this in your office is also a great conversation starter, because every time someone new comes to my office, they say, what's this? And that makes for an interesting conversation and story. When you look back, how do you feel about obstacles that stood in your way when you were trying to achieve something important to you? Do they look smaller than they initially appeared? It's certainly the case for me. And they, not only are they smaller, but we realize maybe they can also help you. Dr. Timothy Butler, is the director of career development programs at Harvard Business School. He's also a psychologist and a psychotherapist. And one of his books is named Getting Unstuck, How Dead Ends Become New Paths. And in this book, he talks about the cycle of impasse and how it's helpful to us to reinvent our new self. He explains that as we go through this cycle, in the apparent dead ends, we gain a better understanding of who we are, more clarity about the type of work that can make us feel like we're bringing value to the world around us. 
And he says that it helps you create a new vision. That feeling of dead end I've experienced shortly after I graduated. Well, seven years later. Because I worked for seven years in the telecom industry after leaving this school. And at some point, I wanted something new. I left my job, took a break, took a trip to Arizona, where I finally rode a Harley on the desert roads. And I came back energized, thinking, this is going to be easy. I have solid CV. I'll apply to similar companies, and it shouldn't take long. But I kept failing at the same point in the process. I would submit my application, get called in for the first round of interviews, get called in for the second round of interviews, and then they would choose someone else. I felt miserable, and I would obsess over what it was that could have gone wrong. It would even keep me up at night. I would picture this big failure in my life staring back at me. And it would look like um, a yellow giant. And I realized it was all happening again. Eventually, I managed to lift my head up and look towards where I wanted well, my life to go. And that did not look like telecom. Through meeting several people from higher education, I, understand, I understood that what I needed was much more human dimension in my work. And that I truly wanted to do was to help others on their open road to professional freedom. And that's how I transitioned to the higher education sector and working for a business school. So this on my desk is not only a reminder, to me, it's a trophy for a difficulty turned into an achievement. Will you face some hurdles, some interferences, some roadblocks? Absolutely. You have, and you will again. But it's how you approach those obstacles that will make a difference to your life and to your career. A recent survey by the Financial Times shows what MBA recruiters look for when they hire. And the same applies to your generation, those of you studying here, and even those of you from other generations. The newspaper asks recruiters every year in the skills gap survey what companies look for, what are the skills that are most in demand, and those that are hard to find. Among the top five most difficult skills to recruit are drive and resilience. In other words, your determination and your capacity to recover quickly from difficulties are some of the key abilities that will make you successful. So how do you turn the imposing monsters into silly little cones, and maybe even into trophies? Well, take them. Use them. Use them to take stock and to gain perspective. Make them your stories. When you talk about your struggles, you also talk about your strength and what it is that made you who you are today. And when you face failure, support is often what will help you get back on track. Find yourself a Pierre, motorcycle instructor, a wise mentor, who will help you define where it is you want to go and remind you of it when you tend to deviate from that road. Imagine yourself as you're about to reach your next goal. You're close to succeeding. Next time something unexpected happens, with a new perspective 
on obstacles, you'll be able to smile, succeed, and celebrate. Thank you.